first uh, we have, we're going to be talking about the Jewish wedding and how it sort of relates to the rapture and the coming of the Lord. Um, do you guys understand me pretty good? I know I, I, I kind of talk a little strange. Uh, okay, so relationship to Yeshua and his bride, the body of believers. The first thing in a Jewish wedding, the customs, is called the Eurusin. E-R-U-S-I-N. And you know what? These books here will explain a lot as well. You can also contact them and get their uh, CD as well. Um, the Eurusin or the Kiddushin, which is called a betrothal or an engagement. It's completely different versus the customs that they have uh, here in America and in other places of the world. This is basically from a Jewish uh, standpoint, and actually the Lord kind of gave us the picture of his return, uh, his soon return in the Jewish wedding. So the Kiddushin is derived from the word kadosh, meaning holy, okay? Um, once a bride and a bridegroom enter into this initial phase of marriage, they are considered married, okay? So once you have the betrothal, though, they're married. Even though they haven't had a regular ceremony like they would here in America, you walk down the aisle and then you're married. That's not how it works um, in the Jewish customs. Um, so they are considered married, and the only way they can break that engagement is um, adultery, okay? And then they would have to get what's called a get, a G-E-T, which is in America would be called a divorce, okay? Uh, if the female, if the woman was found in adultery, a lot of times they would stone her. So, um, now this period lasts from one to two years, okay? The betrothal is a parallel to the engagement in most ways, except that in ancient Jewish customs, it was binding, like a contract is binding and actually, ooh. <laughs> oh, get me off of that screen. I look like the steep puff marshmallow person. Okay, you can put the... Oh, okay, that's better. Um, oy vey. Um, what, he showed up there earlier. Can you put that up there? The, um, oh, the uh, contract, the uh, help me out here, the ketubah. <laughs> can you put that ketubah up there? Now, the ketubah, I was going to bring it in. It's, it's pretty big, but the, um, it got cracked and everything. Not the ketubah itself, but the frame. So I had him to make a picture of it, to take a picture. This is my actual ketubah. Um, it is anido di vilido di. I am my beloved, and I'm be my beloved is mine. But they come in different uh, ketubahs. Depends on what you're looking for. Mine is in the form of the, the doves and also the um, the mitzvah, the commandments. Okay, the ten commandments there, or the ten sayings, as we would say. So now I'm not married. I'm married to the Lord, and that's the only man I'm looking to be married to. I have two children, and I'm good to go. But this is my ketubah. I bought it years and years ago, and um, now the Lord is just having me to use it for this purpose. Amen? So um, their marriage was considered binding. Um, it was a contract, actually up until even the wedding day. So when Joseph discovered that his betrothed wife Mary was with child, he had real grounds to obtain a divorce from her or to even had her stone until the angel appeared to him and explained to him what was going on. Um, also, they are not allowed to have any type of physical relations, okay? No type of sexual relationships or, or nothing. Um, it, was pure, it was purely kept holy, okay? Holy before God, holy. Um, you know what? Thank you, Holy Spirit. He's just telling me to. Uh, I have to tell you something real quick before I get back to this. I used to have a shofar a long time ago. And when I went homeless, I sold my shofar, which the Lord gave me permission to a psalmist, okay? And the Lord has been telling me for a long time your shofar is coming. This is, this, he said, this will be a new shofar, and it will have a different sound. 
the sound of my coming. I wanted a shofar so bad, so bad to bring to this conference, and I just did not have one. But I have one now. I want to thank our brother, Kevin. The Lord spoke to him and told him to give me that shofar. And yes, amen. Um, so I give God glory for that um, because I was about to seriously cut a rug, a Pentecostal rug back there. And then the Holy Spirit fell on Victoria and she took over. So I was like, go ahead. <laughs> but I just want to thank God. He's so faithful. And so I blessed him with some challah bread, you know. Um, so anyway, we bless him and ask the Lord to return unto him uh, the same favor and blessing upon his life. Amen. So I just wanted to share that. So anyway, okay, back to this. Now, the arrangement, the groom's father. Now, listen to these details, okay? The, uh, this is how the arrangement went. The groom's father made an approved choice of the bride, okay? In the tradition, in the Jewish customs, marriages were arranged by their fathers, okay? And it's quite often that the bride and the groom have never met each other. I have seen, I, I, I thank you, uh, Dr. Lipkin. I just love you so much. I just feel like family already, Mishpoka. You know, what he's talking about, the coming of the Lord, and we are right there. What he's talking about, the Nephilim. Boy, I could go into a whole bunch of stuff and just start preaching up here. But, you know, he's right on what he's talking about. Every speaker is right on. And I have seen, now I see into the realm of the spirit. I see angels. I've been to heaven. I'm going to share with you if I, if I have time in between here, a couple of uh, visions or dreams the Lord has given to me about the rapture. So I know that we're very close. The last one I had basically was like a week and a half ago where I was standing in front of, the, in front of a grandfather clock. And I saw the clock was midnight. And all of a sudden I began to hear bong, bong. And it bonged three times. Nine more bongs that were left. When I woke up, the Lord says, that is how close you are to my coming for you. Amen? Amen. So we've never really, I've seen the Lord, but not in all his glory, because we can't. But we have never really and truly seen him in all of his beauty. Right? Amen? So that's how it is, is that the bride and the groom basically have never really seen one another before their engagement, okay? And so in the biblical Christianity, the church and the body of believers is the bride, and the Messiah is the bridegroom. But the Father makes all of the choices. Everybody say all. all. No, say all. all. There you go. Okay. So... John 6, 44, no one can come to me unless the father who sent me draws him and I will raise him up in the last days. I'm just going to go through because this is being recorded, I'm sure. So it'll be on um, tape. Second Corinthians 11, 2, for I, Paul, have betrothed you to one husband that I may present you as a virgin to Mashiach, Messiah, the groom, his promise, which is called the Tenaim, T-N-A-I-M, which are conditions. And we know that they are conditions. As Sister was talking about here, it's not a once save, always save. There are conditions. Amen? Okay, so now we have the groom makes a covenant or a contract promise. The groom does. The ketubah, hey, oh, I like that too. Hey. All right, well, you know, the ketubah, you can keep that up there. That's fine. Um. Where was I? Is a document or a contract, okay? It's a contract that is used for the purpose of assuring the bride will be provided for. And we're supposed to be walking by faith and not by sight. Is that true? We're supposed to depend on Jehovah, on the Father. We're supposed to depend on the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, Yeshua HaMashiach, right? As our provider for everything. Now, once this document was signed and witnessed, always by two witnesses. I mean, think about the two witnesses. You even have two witnesses coming, correct? Two witnesses here, two witnesses there. You know, during the Feast of Trumpets, before they would even call Rosh Hashanah or the Feast of Trumpets, what would they have? They would send out how many witnesses? Two witnesses to go and to see if the moon was at its uh, sliver yet, right? Okay, the beginning of the month. So you have the uh, two people who witnessed this once this document was signed, two people witnesses. Then it was binding and the couple would consider 
marriage, okay? Then they would drink a cup of wine called the Kiddush cup, which is basically a covenant. It's a sealing and a covenant, or it's also called the cup of blessings, okay? Now the groom, he pays a price to show that he's very serious. So he's got to bring some big money. <laughs> he's got to bring some cattle and some sheep and some, you know, this and that and <laughs> all kinds of stuff. So he's got to show that he's serious, that he really desires this woman to be his bride. Amen? Um, now today, the wedding ring is also used for the same purpose. And of course, in the American culture, the, the wedding ring would be used, but this is actually the ketubah, and then it's also the price that he brings, whether it's money or whether it's sheep or cattle or whatever. And they still practice these customs to some degree uh, still today in Israel, okay? Now we look at Yeshua HaMashiach. What did he pay? He paid the price. See, I like to have everybody interact, you know? Are you still out there? Yeah. Okay. I like to have you interact because this is not about me. This is about all of us together. Amen? So um, Yeshua paid the price, the ultimate price. He was the sacrificial lamb. There is no more need for sacrifice. He was and is the sacrificial lamb. Amen? The spotless lamb of God. Amen? He paid an ultimate price for us, for each and every one of us in here. He died for us. For every situation and everything that we go through, he died for us. He died for the world. Amen? What a price to pay. And how our Mashiach, our Messiah, was in that garden sweating blood before he went, knowing what was going to happen. Can you imagine? <sighs> Thank you, Lord. Okay, so uh, then you have the groom's speech of promise, his speech of promise to his, his bride that he would come to claim her soon, okay? Now, this is the engagement promise. It's a covenant relationship. How many people are married in here? Okay, you have a covenant relationship, not only with the father, not only with the son, but you have a covenant relationship, men with your wife and wife with your men, amen? Amen. So what do you do if you don't spend time with your mate? How are you going to develop that covenant relationship? How are you going to get to know them intimately? If you're in the room with a thousand people and your mate is calling your name, if you don't have that relationship with that person, you can't distinguish their voice. We need to be able to distinguish the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Lord. Amen. It's spending time with the lover of our soul daily. Worship. Worship is a big key. It's not just sounding the shofar. Worship. Worship. Shabbat. You know what Shabbat means? Somebody tell me, what does Shabbat mean? To praise. To crack. To break the ground. Amen? <sighs> Hallelujah. So, a covenant relationship. God made a new covenant. The Barit Hatashah, the new covenant, which in my mind, he just confirmed and made that covenant, the Torah or the covenant, the old covenant, he made it even better. You know, when the Lord said, I came to fulfill the law. Now, there are two laws. There's the oral law and then there's Hashem. There's God's law. God's law never has been done away with. It's not even considered law. It's to hit the mark, it's God's instructions. That's what it means. But people don't understand that because you don't understand the Hebrew mindset. And that's why God says a bunch of us Jewish us, you know, to come and help you. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Hallelujah. We need each other, Christians and Jews. We can't do this without each other. You have something we need and we have something you need. Amen? Amen. Nobody has it all. Say all. <laughs> so we have the groom's uh, speech of promise. We have the covenant relationship. Um, Jeremiah, read when you get a chance, Jeremiah uh, 31 and 31. This is where you should, well, let's see. God made a new covenant with Israel and Judah, and Yeshua drank that cup of redemption. He drank it at the Feast of Pesach, Passover, okay? Yeshua ultimately paid that price of redemption on that stake. And anyone who died on what was called the stake or the cross, it was considered such a shame. It was a shameful death, okay? Matthew 26, 27 through 29. 
1 Corinthians 6 and 20. John 14, 2 and 3. Now, this is the exciting part that I really, really like. Um, how many of you know in here we have seven feasts of the Lord? Okay. And we only have how many left that need to be fulfilled? Three. Amen. Three. If Yeshua fulfilled the first four, why would he not fulfill his own feast, the last three? Amen? Amen. His death, his burial, his resurrection, and the coming of the Ruach HaKodesh. Amen? The Spirit, the Holy Spirit. I just love him. He's my best friend. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. He's like, holla. Makes you want to holla. <laughs> Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I get excited when I start talking about the Lord, you know? Hello. So the Lord is going to fulfill those last three feasts. Now, did you know that the Feast of Trumpets, did you know that it's called the, the day of uh, the great, uh, of the uh, awakening of the dead? Did you know that? Did you know that it's, it's, it's the coronation of the king? Did you know that? Yeah, it's also considered the coronation of the king. It's also considered the day that no man knows the hour. The Lord has already given it to us. Now, I'm not saying he's going to come on that day. He can come right before. He can come on that day. Or he can come right after. But it will be fulfilled. The day that no man knows has to do with the two witnesses. We don't know when Rosh Hashanah starts. They have to send those witnesses out first. They can put it on the calendar all they want. But if they don't see the sign in that moon, it ain't happening. Say, it ain't happening. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I used to be a cop, so I'm a little, really. <laughs> I'm a little out there. I like to joke, too. I used, to, I used to always say, I will never be like my papa. He was the only Jewish man I knew that could be in a movie and share his popcorn with everybody in the movie. He'd be laughing and popcorn's flying everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I, never, I said I would never be like him. I'm just like him. Okay, hallelujah. Let's get to the good part. Now we have the groom. Now we have the groom prepares a place. What did the Lord say in his word? Come on, somebody tell me. I go to what? To prepare a place for you. And come on. That's right, okay? So you know what a chuppah is. Does anybody know what a chuppah is? What is the chuppah? It's the Jewish tent, correct? What you get married under. So think about this. The Lord says, I go to prepare a place for you. I go to prepare a chuppah. Everybody say chuppah. 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 <laughs> Amen. You got to get that, you know. You got all the Jewish people in the, at the table eating dinner and everybody spitting, <laughs> you know. That's how it works, really. You ever been to a Jewish table? Am I right? You get a whole, everybody's talking Hebrew and spitting on. It's kosher. Don't worry about it. So Yeshua tells us that he does not know when he will come, and he does not. Only the Father knows. But we must be alert and ready. Just like the brother's hat, it said, get ready. Amen? For he is preparing our place right now. Well, that was back then. I know that the mansions are ready. I know that the angels are ready. I know that they're ready to sound the alarm. The Lord has shown me these things. The Lord came to me in a dream as my husband about a week and a half ago, and he said, or two weeks ago, and he said, Leora, he says, hurry, go pack. He says, you must prepare and get ready for the great escape. Wow. Amen? Amen. What is the great? He's never spoken. The, he's always said rapture to me. He's never spoken the great escape. It's the same thing. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Do you know what the word hallelujah means? Hallel? Amen. To praise. Yah. To praise Amen. God. So he goes and he prepares a place for us. He says, be on alert. Be ready. Do all that he asks while you are here on the earth. Amen? Amen? Offer yourselves, your ministries, everything that God has given to you. If you are trying to climb up a ladder over someone, you're going to be in a lot of trouble with God because we are not in competition with each other. Amen. Amen? We all carry different anointings as the bride of Christ, and we all have something to bring to the table. The only head macho is Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. So, now, John 14, 1 through 4 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If, it, if I go and prepare a place for you, imagine how long ago he said that. I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you will also be. I believe that we are spiritually already seated in high places because that's what the Word of God says. We just got to have the body go up. Amen? Waiting for up to two years for the bridegroom to come for the bride. As John the Baptist was filled with, with joy when he saw Yeshua, so we too will be filled with joy. And when we are joined in heavenly places with our king to enter into the bridal chamber. Amen. And this will be like seven days. Now, did you know that a Jewish wedding lasts for seven days? That's a wedding. That's a lot of money. But it's also a wedding. Seven days. How long is Jacob's trouble or the seven years of tribulation? Seven. It's either Jacob's trouble, because it is Jacob's trouble. It has to deal with Israel then, not the bride. We out of here. And people tell me, well, I don't know, you know. I don't know if um, there's a pre-trib rapture. Well, you know what? I'll say bye to you on the way up. Because I'm not staying here. The Lord has shown me things coming. I've seen disaster. God has shown me um, there's an asteroid coming. He has shown me there's tsunami coming. He's shown me all of California. He's shown me a lot of things. And there are other brothers and sisters around the world that have seen the same thing. I'm not going to be here. So there will be a seven-year period, which we will, we will not be in agony. We will be at the wedding feast of the Lamb, the supper. So... Luke 5.33, then they say to him, why do the disciples of John fast often to make prayer? And likewise, that's not what I wanted to read. I'm sorry. That's the, all right. Um, okay. Now, part two is the um, Nisuin, the chuppah, ceremony, nuptials, the Nisuin, N-I-S-U-I-N. Does anybody else want a book? Okay, the Lord's telling me to give some other people a book. Lord, just show me who. Ooh. Okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Better have got one already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, half of my books disappeared over there, and the Lord was like, I had people coming to the table getting them. There was somebody else the Lord showed me over here. I see you right there. Okay, I have a few more. I wish I had more. But you can always call Jewish Jewels, you know. You can go online and find them. Okay. Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Now, where was I? Now, um, the Nisuin or the Chupa. Nisuin, N-I-S-U-I-N or Chupa. The word Nisuin means to lift up or to carry, okay? Yes. Lifting up the bride is an ancient wedding custom of carrying the bride to the ceremony. Now, I want you to get that, um, that video ready, the uh, Perry Stone. This is very important for you to realize what is going to happen to us as the bride of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen? So it means to lift up to, or to carry is an ancient wedding custom of carrying the bride to the ceremony in the carriage lifted by poles. Although seldom done today, the ceremony bears the name. The chuppah is not only related to the bridal chamber, it is also lifted by poles like the ancient carriage, okay? The custom of lifting the bride and now the groom is in chairs is rooted in the same basic thing. You ever seen them lift a, a bride up in the chair? And the, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The original custom is to carry the bride, okay? And like a, it's almost like a carriage. Um, I think they call it also, is it a litter? The shofars uh, are sounding and she's carried to her groom. Amen? All right, so um, now in Isaiah 26, 20, it says, Come now, my people, and enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Do you know what that talks about? That talks about the Lord coming to take us, to hide us for the seven years of Jacob, for the seven years of tribulation. He's taking his bride into his chambers, which is also another uh, way of looking at that is into the chuppah, the marriage chambers. Amen? Amen. 
And we are hidden. The bride is hidden. She's hidden for those seven years until the indignation is over. Now, the mikvah ritual. There is a mikvah. Today, the Jewish bride and the groom are immersed into a ritual pool. It's like what the Christians would call a baptism. But instead, you go down into the mikvah yourself. Instead of having someone to baptize you, you go and you mikvah yourself. It is a going down still into the grave and coming up as a new person, a new creature in Christ, amen? And normally you are, giving, uh, you are given a Jewish name, but there's also a Jewish blessing pronounced over you, okay? Um, let me see here. Uh, we are almost done. Now, the sister played um, They That Are Wise. I was really going to play that today. <laughs> and then the Lord said, no, you do the rapture one. So... Um, we must do the Lord's will daily. Um, oh, I'm sorry. The bride. Now the bride, um, she waits. I'm going to tell you, she waits after all of the betrothal and everything and the contract and the drinking of the Kiddush, the juice, the agreement. Now she waits while the groom, he goes off and he builds a house. He builds a chuppah. Okay. And I'm going to kind of cut this short a little bit because I want to share a few dreams with you. But he builds a house. He goes to his father. And he starts building this home for his soon-to-be bride. Okay? And he's building and he's working away. And he has no idea how long it's going to take. But he knows he's got to build it in a hurry. He wants to get his wife. Hello? You know, he wants to go get his woman. All right, so he's working away, and he's probably got somebody in there, you know, chiseling and doing all of this stuff, and he's getting himself ready. He has no idea, no idea when his father will release him. This is real. This is in the Jewish wedding, okay? So while he's getting himself ready and he's getting the chuppah or the house ready, one day his father says, okay, son, now it's time for you to go get your wife. What she's doing with her bridesmaids is she's keeping her eye at all times on the Lord. She's keeping her eyes on being pure. She's keeping her eyes off of anything that will distract her. Another man, okay? Whatever it may be, she's keeping her eyes off of lust. She's keeping her eyes off of anything in the world that would take her distraction away from the love that is coming for her. And she's keeping herself pure. But she has the um, bridesmaids that are there helping her. They surround her at all times. They surround the bride and they encourage her. Oh, he's coming. Don't worry. He's coming. He's coming. Just keep working. Do this, do that, and be in expectation for him to come for you. This is what the bridesmaids are doing. They're constantly surrounding her with these words of encouragement. You know, don't fall. Don't fall. Don't look this way. Don't do this. Don't say that. Don't wear this. Keep yourself pure and clean. And she's waiting. She has no idea when he's coming. So... You have the parable of the wedding feast, Matthew 22, 11 through 12. It says, but when the king came in to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how'd you get in here? You know, and you don't even have wedding clothes. The bridesmaids, unmarried friends who attend the bride and provide light for the groom who comes at night. This is a traditional custom for friends to light the called it's called the Havdala. Havdala, H A V D A L A H, Havdala candles in the in the uh, processional of during the veiling ceremony, okay? So basically, um, when he's coming down, it actually, you know what? It also represents God's uh, Shekinah glory. The Havdala, it represents, it's like a light. It is a symbol of God's presence or the Shekinah. Earlier today, I was seeing a glory cloud coming right in here in the middle. I was seeing the cloud. I see things. I see 
things in the spirit, but I also see them in the natural. You know why? Because I spend time with him. And when you spend time with him, everything that is about him rubs off on you. Amen? So we prepare the bride in our ministry to each other. Amen? Our ministry to each other. We are the bride. Now you look at the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew 25, 1 through 13. You have the five foolish and the five wise. And now we who are called to sound the shofar, we are trying to sound the alarm to awaken the sleeping bride. And a lot of people are just not getting it. They're not getting it. It's like the sister said, you tell somebody, Jesus is coming soon. I can feel it. I don't know about you, but I can feel it in my bones. I can feel it in my spirit. You know, it's like that song, fire shut up in your bones. I can feel it in the atmosphere. I can feel something is coming. Something is going to happen, like something big. And isn't it interesting? We have um, Rosh Hashanah, Feast of Trumpets coming. And then the next month, in October 3rd, you have that new movie, Left Behind. Just a thought. That's all. I believe, like um, Brother Lipkin said, you know, between these four red blood moons, we out of here. I'm believing I'm out of here. I do not want to be here. I'm ready to go home. I've had enough of this world. Okay, so now what you have is a scenario. Then the, then the father says, okay, son, now you can go get your bride. Remember, she's been working just like Ruth. Ruth was working in the field when her, the lover of her soul found her. He found her doing what? Working. Working in the fields. Amen? Yes. We are to be found working for the Lord, but still listening watching and waiting. So he comes down with his groomsmen and everybody's blowing the shofar throughout the whole city of Jerusalem, okay? Now she hears the shofar, she hears the sound of the trumpet and so do her bride's uh, maids. And they awaken and now they are dressed and ready to go with their lamps filled. They are filled with the Spirit of God, amen? They're filled with him. They are longing for him, loving him, waiting. And so what she does is she goes out and she goes up to Jerusalem to meet the lover of her soul. And then that's when she is brought into the chambers and that is when the covenant is completely sealed. Amen? Do you understand how that's related? The wedding related to the coming of the Lord for us? Amen? Do you understand the significance of that? Amen? He's coming. He's coming. He is coming. The Lord has given me dreams about the rapture over and over. My children have had dreams about the rapture. That's my daughter all the way in the back. Everybody say, hi, Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Stand up, Sarah. Say hi. Yes. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> so I just love her. She is a princess. Amen. So I want you to be encouraged. Um, one of the dreams the Lord gave me not long ago was I was in a place preaching, and I had my two children, Sarah and Joshua. And I was on this huge platform, but the inside of the church seemed to be black. There was no lighting. I don't, you know what? I'm not one to really care about what people think about me. I think you kind of got that impression about me already, okay? The only person I care is the Lord. He's given me his stamp of approval. People are going to like you, and people are not going to like you. I really don't care. All I care about is pleasing the Lord. You don't have to like me, okay? But you do have to love me because Jesus said you got to love me. Hello? You don't have to like me, but you got to love me. Ha <laughs> ha, right? Amen. And you got to forgive me. If I wear the seat, if I look at your crooked and I got a different color stock on, you still got to forgive me and love me. Amen. 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 I live a long way from here, so I probably won't see you guys for a long time until we're on the way up. <laughs> but what I'm saying, what was I saying? I just forgot what I was saying now. Okay, Brother Stevens rubbing off on me. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay. I don't know. Is this like a Jewish thing? You know, we just start talking about stuff and we just, uh, yeah. So anyway, 
it was dark in the church. I promise you, it was dark. And I was preaching, and I was telling people, I was yelling, and I was saying, Jesus is coming. The rapture is coming. And nobody was paying attention. And the Spirit of God fell upon me. And when the Spirit of God fell upon me, I started getting loud. And I started prophesying to people, telling them, Jesus sent me here to prophesy to you, to tell you that he's coming, and you're not even listening. And everybody in the church was just doing their own little thing. So I walked off the platform, and, and I was somewhere with my kids, and all of a sudden, the rapture took place, and there were only four women that got raptured out of this whole church, four, outside of me and my children. There was another one recently where the Lord raptured me up, and a lot of times he will take me out of my body, and I will travel with the Lord. Okay, and then sometimes it's just a dream or sometimes it's an open vision where I'm seeing like a screen. But the Lord took me, he took me out of my body and I was up there and I saw a multitude of angels. And I saw people on horses and Yeshua himself was in front of me and I was grabbing on to his, his uh, blouse or his shirt, his garment. And oy vey, he turned to me and just smiled. And he had a crown on it. That's all he had to do. I melted like butter. OK? Everybody say butter. butter. No, come on. Butter. butter. There you go. I'm going to turn you all Jewish if I am the last thing I do. So he turned and he just smiled at me. And that's all I needed from him was a smile. And everything was quiet and still. We were all waiting for the Lord to give the word. All of a sudden, he gave the word, and you could hear the galloping of the horses. You know, the feet or hoofs or whatever you want to call it. You can hear multitudes, multitudes. And I was just holding on to the Lord. And we were going, and I could see the clouds. It was like we were going in a supernatural uh, speed. And then all of a sudden, we were in heaven. And both of my children and me, I was like, ah! Colors all over the, I saw animals I've never seen before. I saw colors I've never seen before. My kids were so excited, so excited. We were in heaven. Let me tell you, he's coming. He's coming. I had another dream recently, not long ago. The sister back there, I just met her. She was in my dream concerning the rapture. And I just met her probably two months ago, Victoria. OK, I didn't realize it was her until probably uh, a couple weeks, few weeks ago. And I dreamt that we were going into this building. Now, I dance prophetically, but I'm also a part of a Jewish uh, group called the Shekinah um, Davidic Dancers. And in the dream, uh, she, I didn't know her name. She had the name Boom, and she had a boom box on her, <laughs> on her shoulder. And I thought that was a little weird, but she's like a boom. She's really, she is in the spirit, as you saw her prophesying earlier. Okay, so we're getting ready to walk into a building and we're going to dance, to practice for our dance. She just joined our dance practice team, okay? Now I'm thinking, hmm, okay. So, and then all of a sudden, I see this glass, we're in this building and the glass is clear and I see a little bit of snow on the ground. Now I don't prophesy dates, so don't come to me and tell me that, oh, you gave a date. No, I didn't. I'm not giving any dates, I'm not giving any months, but I am telling you, we are in the season of his return. We are at the door. The Lord has showed me that he is there to come for us, okay? So anyway, I look around for her so we can go practice, and she's gone. And me, I grew up, I grew up in the hood. Let me just say that. It's on camera. I'm, I'm a Jew from the hood, and that ain't good. That's what we <laughs> usually say. Hello, you know? So, but that's my life story. But... Um, so, and I'm looking around for her. She's gone. And I walk, I'm walking to the door, and I'm like, I know Jesus didn't leave me here. And she left. I got to go, too. And I'm screaming. And as soon as I pushed the door open, I started going up and lifting off of the ground. I was screaming so loud. I was so happy. I was crying and screaming. And I was like, it's the rapture. It's finally happening. I was like a mad woman. And we were going up and up and up, and we were in the, going up uh, toward the stars. And it was almost like we were going in a spiral. 
as we were going up. And there were other believers that were still coming up because you got to remember we're in different time zones. So there were other believers that were still coming up. And you could hear like the commotion of other believers just talking. And ha it was such happiness, you know. I was so happy. I literally thought it was the rapture. When I woke up, I was mad. <laughs> ha! Again? The other day before I came here, I was asleep and I was sleeping good. And I jumped up out of my sleep thinking I was here in the show floor and stood at the door waiting. My heart was pounding. It was the sound of the train. <laughs> I'm like, you know what, Lord? I can't handle this too much more. Okay? And so then I laid back down and the Lord was just so gracious. He says, practice run. <laughs> I was like, really? So anyway, so I just want you guys to be encouraged. I could go on and on. I could tell you stories. I was seeing angels in here earlier today, and I was seeing them bringing garments in here. And the Lord, I heard the Lord say, ask the people, do you have on your wedding shoes? Do you have on your wedding shoes? That's what I heard him saying. But I was seeing them bringing garments. That's all I could tell you. Seek the Lord every day in repentance. Stay ready. Sound the alarm. We have to do this together. It's not a one-man show. It's all of us together. Love, forgive. Every day live as if we are about to escape this demonic planet. Because I'm going to tell you, the Lord has also shown me the Nephilim are coming. The Nephilim of the scripture as in the days of Noah, when they were on the earth, they weren't completely wiped out, but they are coming. And they are going to, look it up in scripture if you don't believe me. It's like the brother Dr. Lipkin was talking about, I've studied that. When the Lord started talking to me about that, I was like, yeah, Lord, you know what? You look crazy, right? <laughs> uh, Nephilim, and he said, go look it up. Right there in scripture. How many times have we looked in scripture and we just look it over? But when God brings it through revelation, of the Holy Spirit, and he downloads and lets us understand and see, oh my gosh, it's real. This is why they're putting all these alien movies out, right? They are programming, even in the cartoons, they're programming the minds of the people. No such thing as an alien. They're called demons, okay? That's what they are. And these things are coming. Like you said, the Vatican and the poop, I mean the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> yup. Oh, that's, that, that, that's, that's on... Uh, that's recorded, right? You can, you can bleep that out. Okay. Anyway, I want to do the ironic blessing with um, Brother Stephen. If that's okay, before I close out, I want to bless you all uh, with Brother Stephen. And then um, if we could do that together. And phew, it's fitting in here. Sweetie. Hallelujah. I love to have fun with the Lord. You know what? I don't tell people, call me rabbi. Don't call me. Just call me Leora. I have people call me crazy. <laughs> but I don't really care about that because I am. <laughs> but anyway, I love to have fun when I'm teaching. There's modes that I get in. I get into very serious modes. As you can see, when the Holy Spirit is on you, we become different when he's moving. But then... I like to have fun with my brothers and sisters as well. You know what I mean? To laugh, to know, but to be serious also about what God is about to do. Amen? Amen. Stay ready. So Amen. how do you want to do this? We're bringing your daughter up. Sarah, come up, please. I'm going to be in a lot of trouble. I believe it. Mm -hmm. When my children were born, um, my son was blessed by um, grandfather Yaakov, who was a rabbi. Um, when my daughter was born, she, um, this on your shoulders. she, it's a talit, honey. She, she never had the blessing of a, a, a Jewish father, okay? And the Lord put it on my heart today to ask Brother Stephen to bless her. Bless her. As a father, Jewish father would bless his daughter. 
she needs it. She's so precious, and she's very dear to me. I love her. Sarah means princess, and God is the one that gave me her name seven years before she was conceived. The doctors told me that I would lose her, and I said, the devil is a liar. <laughs> no, I will not lose her, and I didn't. As you can see, she's very giantly standing right here. But she's so special and so gifted and so talented. And so I would just like, as the rabbi does this, or Brother Stephen does this, if you could just extend your hands toward her as he blesses her. Sister, I want you to stay right here. Okay. And you come forward now. <clears throat> it is a custom in Israel. And I'm going to read to you both in Hebrew and English. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying to Aaron and to his sons, saying, In this way you shall bless the children of Israel, saying to them. So that's both men and women, because you are a child of Israel. Ve'yibu'cha Yehova ve'shmecha Ya'er Yehova panav el el'yacha ve'yachanecha Isha Yehova panav el'echa ve'yashem lecha shalom Ve'shemo et shmi al b'nei Yisrael ve'ani avachem the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious to thee. The Lord lift up his countenance to thee and give thee peace. And they shall put my name upon the children of Israel and bless them. God bless you, my sister and my daughter. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you so much. Bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sit down. Thank you. Love you. Give me a hug. Oh, you're in trouble. I love you. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless you. I love you, all of you, and I look forward to seeing you on the way up. Amen. Amen. <laughs> <laughs>